Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. And I hope you've had a, a good Christmas. I hope everybody's uh, feeling a bit more refreshed this evening. I'm feeling a little bit tired, but uh, I hope everybody's okay. Someone requested that uh, I make a video today because I've uploaded quite a lot. Uh, so they've asked me to make a video, so I'm going to make a video. And I prayed about it, what to make, and I felt I could make a video on prayer. That's something I know a bit about and can share with you. Uh, also, it'll be an interest to Christians and to atheists or skeptics uh, to think about a skeptic, a skeptic's guide to prayer. I'm going to read a couple of quotes uh, just to get the ball rolling. Um, Richard Baxter says, Prayer must carry on our work as much as preaching. He preaches not heartily to his people that will not pray for them. Spurgeon says, Groanings which cannot be uttered and are often prayers which cannot be refused. John Mansfield says, God warms his hands at man's heart when he prays. Oswald Chambers says, When you are in the dark, listen and God will give you a very precious uh, message. R.A. Torrey says, The Spirit, when he prays through us, or helps us to meet the mighty oughtness of right praying, trims our praying down to the will of God. C.S. Lewis says, In worship, God imparts himself. So those are just a, a few quotes. We'll look at some more in a minute. And uh, Let's just look at a few scriptures. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, 11. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Psalm 4, 1, hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Psalm 145, 18, the Lord is near to all them that call on him, to all that call on him in truth. Uh, Proverbs 15, 29, the Lord is far from the wicked, but hears the prayer of the righteous. Luke chapter 7, verse 11, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give you good things to them that ask him? Luke 16, 12, 6, 12, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray, and continued all night in prayer to God. And Luke 18, 1, And he spoke a parable to them to this end, that man ought always to, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Romans 8.26, likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.7, pray without ceasing. Philippians 4.6, careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So this is going to be a discussion and meditation. But before we discuss and meditate, I'd like us just to listen to this and calm our minds tonight. So I just want to just talk about prayer and I hope it's a guide to the skeptics and I hope it's a guide to Christians too. First of all, what is prayer? I think that prayer is fellowship with God. I think it's communing with God. You know, there's a, there's a, a story um, uh, of a Hindu tradition don't worry, I'm not a syncretist. I only believe Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus died for all. And Jesus is the only way to get saved. So don't anybody be thinking I'm a syncretist or anything like that. I'm just telling you a little story that illustrates something. In, in, in India, there are there is a tradition of Hindus having 
uh, kind of respect for their friends and, and wanting to be with their friends and there's a story of uh, someone going to their, their friend who's a Hindu and they were lying asleep and the, the other Hindu came in and just sat near their friend and was quiet just enjoying the presence of their friend and in a way I think that's a picture of prayer prayer is, is just being quiet before God not necessarily quiet in the sense that you, you keep your mouth shut but you're still and you're in the presence of God and you're enjoying his fellowship you're enjoying his presence and, and prayer is not uh, something that is not joyful it's something uh, that it is the, it's the most enjoyable experience that you could ever have in your life it really is in it it's a peace and a joy uh, uh, and a comfort and a strength um, but it, it but most of all it, it it's coming into the presence of God and having a that special time with him and it truly is amazing so I think that's part of what prayer it doesn't express everything the way to pray is to know who God is you need to know that God is love God is holy God is just there's only one God God is love God is grace God is purity but there's only one God but he's three persons Father Son and Holy Spirit and these three are one you need to know that the Father planned salvation that the Son accomplished salvation and the Holy Spirit seals salvation so the Father planned the salvation Jesus came down from heaven to earth became a man he was God in the flesh and he went to the cross and he died on that cross for your sin for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life and Jesus died on the cross for you for your sin he was punished for your sin and if you confess your sin you're washed, you're clean, and you're forgiven. Then, as you believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart. Jesus said you must be born again. The Greek word for born again means born from above. And so the Holy Spirit comes to be born inside you. You're born from above. And the Holy Spirit then works in your life and gives you love, joy, peace, and changes you and begins to change you so that you begin to like the Bible, you begin to want to rejoice and praise God. So as you pray, you come into God's presence through com by coming through the blood of Jesus Christ. You confess your sin to Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, and you come into the presence of God through Jesus Christ, and you address the Father through Jesus Christ the Son, with the help of the Holy Spirit and so now you can say as it says in Romans 8 Abba Father God is not just a God of holiness and wrath where he's going to bring judgment but he is a God where he is your Father and you can bring your petitions to him and you can praise him and worship him now when I come to pray before God I first of all confess my sin I then praise God and worship him and adore him then I begin to make intercession or pray for my family and friends I pray for the world, I pray for individual people and then I pray for myself that's how I, 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 I pray so that's how you pray, you depend upon the Holy Spirit you use the Bible as your guide so that's how you pray now prayer can be difficult but you can pray anywhere you want you can pray at home you can pray going to school going to work you can pray anywhere you don't have to go to church to pray you, because the whole point of prayer is your relationship with God you know I've got a, a mobile phone here and I can carry this around with me everywhere I go well you can pray with God everywhere you go you have a connection just as I can talk to my family on this phone you can talk to your Father in Heaven Jesus Christ through Jesus Christ your Lord if you if you trust in him now does God answer prayer 
what 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 does it feel like to pray it, it, it's indescribable all i can say is the greatest pleasure of my life the greatest joy of my life and for every christian is to be able to come into the presence of god and to pray what does prayer achieve it pray it achieves a few thing, a number of things it first of all you change god changes you as you pray the other thing that is that God answers prayer um, you know we were praying for my father that he would meet his his brother who he hadn't seen for many many years sorry I've just got an itch um, that we pray for my father who he hadn't seen his brother for many many years and he, he wanted to know what would happen to his brother because his brother in the 50, 1950s went off or 1960s or some round about that time he went off to fight in the Korean War and joined the Australian Army, and my father never saw my his brother again. When um, you know when, when his brother went off, and and that was when my father was only a young boy, a, a young boy. And so my father just wanted to know where his brother was. So for many many years he hadn't seen his brother, but even if it was just some news, if if his brother had died, that that would be okay and. In that, he, as long as he knew what what was happened, and he he knew the life of his brother from the time that he left home. So, uh, my father prayed. The family praying. And my father got ill, and he went in hospital. And he was talking about his brother all the time, and he really wanted to know what had happened to his brother, or or any news about his brother. Who. Uh, who used to be in the Australian Army but would have retired and etc so my sister a few years before my father being ill had gone to work in America uh, with on a children's camp because she's a youth worker and when my fa that was two years before my father got ill but when my father got ill my sister was seeing my father at hospital and when she went home my father came home from hospital and my sister was phoning a friend who she'd met on a trip uh, on America when she worked on America. And she was saying, oh, my dad, my dad was ill and, you know, and he's come out of hospital now. <coughs> but he'd really like to know where his brother is or what's happened to his brother because um, <coughs> in, Amer in, in he's probably living in Australia, but we don't know where. Now, this person, she, my sister had met when she was in America working on a children's camp and this person said where where um, whereabouts in Australia my, my sister said well all we know is the last we heard the Australian army the only documents we could get from them is that the last we heard he was on such a street in Victoria somewhere or something like that it was such a street but we don't know what number we don't know any more details and no word of a lie this is no word of a lie this person said you won't believe this but I I just live uh, around the corner from that street he was this person was Australian so they were able to go and find out some details for my for my father um, which at least um, give my father peace. The, you know they knew he'd passed his brother had passed away, etc. Um, and you know it, it helped my father to have some kind of closure on the situation. But it was a miracle that my sister two years before had met this person working in a, in in America on a children's camp, but ended up living over in Australia near, near where my father's brother had lived and you could go around there and find out the details and check out etc and they found out that he moved from the house and, he, and he'd gone to a home nearby and stuff like that so there we are God answers prayer now there have been studies is the question for the atheist you know can you disprove or prove that prayer works I don't you see I, that's where I think the limitations of science is how can you prove prayer works 
I don't think you can prove it or disprove it scientifically and I'll tell you why because God is is the one who answers prayer and he's a person and he's not like, he's not like a, a monkey in a circus you know you've got a monkey and they might have a bicycle wheel and they push the bicycle wheel and do a trick and everybody claps and then they get the monkey to do another trick and everybody claps and God's not a monkey that we can just say right uh, we're going to do a scientific experiment to see if you exist we'll do this come on little monkey uh, do our little trick for us so that we can just see what's happening God's not like a monkey in a circus there to just jump when we say God is almighty, he's all powerful and he'll do what he wants the only people that he reveals himself to in answered prayer is those who is calling to salvation and those that, that he has saved so, uh, and perhaps those he's wit trying to witness to and, and get them to realize they need him. But, you know, he's not going to reveal himself to skeptics who sit there thinking they're clever and thinking they can analyze God. He's not going to do that. So I don't think scientifically you can prove prayer or against prayer. I don't think it's possible because God is a person and he's not going to con submit himself to a lab for our convenience he's almighty and powerful and the only way that you can ever get to know whether prayer is answered is by believing in Jesus Christ and being his servant and following him and trusting him and then you will see whether prayer works or not and believe you me prayer works so those are my thoughts that's the skeptics guide to prayer telling you how we pray uh, and some basic information about prayer and from my own experience when I first started praying I find it very strange I, I could only pray for a minute I, I, find, I didn't find it easy I didn't understand it but as you go on as you grow you know it becomes your chief delight and, and it really is a, a great blessing and you change God begins to change you he begins to mold you and I just want to say that the Lord spent a lot of time in prayer. He, he prayed intimately. He says, Our Father, in the Lord's Prayer, who art in heaven, and God is your Father, and He cares intimately. He says the, He is the God of all comfort. So God, God cares, and we can go to Him. And it says we groan, the Holy Spirit's inside us, and we groan. We're sealed with the Spirit, and... The Spirit of God gives us this joy and love and peace and it's beyond understanding. So I'd encourage the critics and Christians to spend time in prayer. You'll find it your chief delight and greatest blessing in life. But pray to the true God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit who is one God. And pray just to that God through Jesus Christ. And I guarantee you'll have a wonderful time and you will uh, never regret doing such a thing pray in faith believing that God will answer your prayers and he will in his time answer them in his way the other question is what about unanswered prayer well there's in a way there's never an unanswered prayer sometimes we pray for something but it's not answered the way we want but perhaps it's God answers it by not giving us it be giving us what we want you know because it wouldn't be good for us and, and in a sense that is an answer to prayer so God answers prayer all the time but sometimes he answers it in a way that we perhaps wouldn't like but it's for our benefit for our good okay thank you for listening and I hope that was an interest to you have a good new year and I'll see you around soon. Take care. God bless.